We're now at uh, 78 degrees south, doing our run across the Ross Ice Shelf towards the Bay of Wales, which will be the southerly most point that any ship can penetrate in the world. It's minus 13 degrees outside, and the ship's windows are starting to freeze. The ship's currently being steered by hand through heavy fog, dodging a whole stack of icebergs. Coming into our first area of ocean refreeze. Stage two, pancake ice. The first we've seen in this section of the Ross Sea. It's a large iceberg off to our starboard side. It's barely visible in the fog. This is what we're on the lookout for. Until a few minutes ago, you couldn't even see that. Well, it's 6.30 in the morning, <clears throat> Sunday, we're still on our way to the Bay of Wales, the ship at the moment has stopped because uh, they're going to wait until after breakfast, which is at 7.30, before we continue on to actually enter the Bay of Wales so that everybody could watch. Uh, so at the moment, everybody is asleep, I'm the only one up on deck. But the ship is totally frozen into this massive expanse of frozen ocean as far as the eye can see. Oh, and the ship itself, well, as you can probably see here, everything is absolutely frozen solid. The lifeboats and the Zodiacs, the Zodiacs which are used to go ashore, are also completely frozen. Now I can't stay out here. Uh, too much longer as my fingers are already beginning to freeze and I'm beginning to lose feeling in them. But just to say that uh, the Bay of Wales is the furthest most south that any ship in the world can penetrate. And we're, we're hoping we may be able to set a new southerly record for a, for a vessel uh, today. The Bay of Wales is also where Amundsen came with his ship, the Fram. He set up on the on the ice shelf at the head of the bay and began his successful trip to be the first person to reach the South Pole just uh, a few weeks ahead of Scott who of course died on the way back Scott whose hut uh, we went to the day before yesterday so it's an extremely significant place you know, I've just come off the bridge and I've uh, been reliably informed that at the moment the temperature is minus 20 degrees Well, we've just got underway now, and we're doing a 180 degree turn to come round on a course to head into the Bay of Wales. We're starting to pick up a little bit of speed now. Apparently this kind of ice is uh, not much of a problem for this ship. It's absolutely treacherous walking along these decks. Like that glass. Exceedingly dangerous. I'm going to work my way up towards the bow at the moment. There's a bit of light snow falling. It's hard to maintain any traction at all. Only a few hardy soles out. Nearly there. Ah, it's a little bit 
warm in here because I'm sheltered by the uh, steel work. A little bit of sunshine. That noise you can hear, that's the hull scraping over the ice. The bow here, the fog is lifted, the sun has come out. And this is absolutely unbelievable. About 11 miles to go. I can feel the ship shaking as it goes over each of these pancakes, which are pretty large now. It's hard to know how much further we'll get. Big fractures appearing in the ice as we push our way through. Still pushing for the record. We've just gone past. 78 degrees at 38 minutes, which was the location of Framheim, a hut on the Ross ice shelf built by Munson. Having passed the position of Framheim, we now have approximately six nautical miles to go. We have one and a half miles to go to set the new world record, and for the first time, I can actually see the ice barrier. Oh, about half a mile to go, and the ice barrier is now clearly visible in front of us. It is an incredible ice shelf, Ross ice shelf, disappearing off the horizon in the direction of the South Pole. 78.44.012 Well we made it, we've just set a new world record for the most southerly point the ship has ever reached in the world.